Welcome back to Facilitation Friday. In this session, I'll be talking about the difference and the similarities between behaviorism and humanism with regard to facilitating a process, mainly in the area of music. I'm Kalani Das, your host and teacher at World Drum Club. Welcome to this session. World Drum Club. So you may have heard the terms behaviorism and humanism. Um, these are most notable in psychology or psychotherapy with Skinner being in the behaviorism camp and Rogers and Maslow in the humanistic or humanism camp. And I'm gonna be talking about this with relationship to, or with re in regard to my work as a music facilitator, but of course, everything I talk about in Facilitation Fridays could apply to all sorts of things, even talking to a group of your friends or your family or your, you know, your spouse or your loved ones. Uh, so it can be on a very tiny personal level all the way up to huge training uh, or corporate uh, philosophies, corporate culture. So what is behaviorism? What is humanism um, or the humanistic approach? So a behavioral approach is essentially looking at observable, measurable behaviors that we feel can be modified via v, um, usually rewards or punishments or positive reinforcement, which is adding something like a compliment uh, or negative reinforcement, which is removing an element like not making a compliment. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all of the details, but I wanna just identify the basic premise, or the basic idea. So that's behaviorism, it looks at people in terms of impulses, you know, desires to uh, get rewards and their kind of aversion to punishment. And therefore we see this manifest in terms of money or a points system or some sort of token economy. For example, in schools where students get stars or happy faces for doing good work or good behavior and they might get docked or they get some sort of punishment like detention or lower grades for poor behavior or poor performance. So in a, in a lot of our ways, in a lot of ways in our society, you can probably think of some, uh, we are operating very much on a behavioral um, model or, or with a behavioral approach. The idea with behaviorism is that if you basically force people or strongly uh, influence people with you know rewards and punishments into a certain behavior that eventually they will see the benefits of the behavior and that will be incorporated into their own kind of ethos or their own way of being and they'll figure out that oh yeah it's better for me to behave this way uh, for example driving the speed limit uh, because I'm you know I don't want to get tickets uh, so that's behaviorism and I'll talk about these in a minute with regard to music facilitation, but I wanna cover the other end of the spectrum or the other side of the coin. These are not mutually exclusive and they're not opposites. They're just different ways of, of looking at people and behavior and maybe working towards certain outcomes. Um, humanistic or humanism, uh, which are not exactly the same term, so I probably shouldn't, they're not exactly the same thing. Um, so let's look at humanistic models. Uh, those are based on the idea that people have a fundamental desire for self-actualization and self-realization and improvement and people want to do well and feel good and they want to do it for themselves because it helps them uh, you know, realize their full potential and feel the way they want to feel. So it's already you can tell that it's much more based on the person, um, the person-centered approach rather than just looking at behaviors. So the idea with a humanistic approach is that if we place people in the right kind of environment, meaning a nurturing environment, we give them the tools they need, we give them the resources they need, and we give them the right kind of encouragement and inf information and resources and some guidance that they will, through their own volition and through their own desires to fulfill their own needs, um, they will evolve into positive behaviors. So the end result you can still look at in terms of behavior, but there's a big difference in what's happening maybe internally 
in the behavioral approach, we're going after rewards and we're trying to avoid punishments. In the humanistic approach, we're trying to satisfy our own inner desire for excellence or for you know what, what Maslow called self-actualization. Um, and that can be intellectual or spiritual, uh, you know, even talk about enlightenment um, and just sort of achieve our highest form of being, if you will. All right, so with regard to facilitation, um, you know, most teachers, and I'll just put this in terms of teachers or therapists uh, or facilitators, most uh, people will blend both of these things, right? Um, I tend to be more on the humanistic or humanist, yeah, humanism or humanistic side of the scale. However, in certain circumstances, you know, I can certainly use a behavioral approach. Um, and most people will, will use both. So we'll look for certain behaviors or we have a goal and we want to shape an experience for people and hopefully help them reach that goal. Uh, I believe in using a humanistic approach because I just feel like it's important to me because music is a humanity and it's an art form that it has a lot to do with how people feel and that if people are not feeling you know, uh, valued and they're not feeling satisfied and they're not feeling included uh, as an artist, as a creator in the musical process, that they're you know, that the reasons for doing it are not as strong and maybe not as valid as if we're just looking for an outcome. So let me put this in perspective of something like uh, facilitating group drumming, or if you want to call it a drum circle, you can call it a drum circle. Um, a behavioral approach to facilitating a group drumming experience might look like standing up and conducting um, certain behaviors, like starting together, stopping together, playing to a beat, um, basically leading the group into the behavior of playing together. Because my thinking is, if these, and I'm just saying this isn't necessarily my thinking, but I'm saying if I'm thinking of it in terms of behavioral approach, if my goal is to help these people play together, the fastest way there is to basically make them by showing them a beat or conducting them, you know, getting them to all play, watch me and do what I do and follow me, all right? That's the fastest way because I know if I, if I give them a really clear beat and, and I basically want them to follow that beat, um, the chances of them all playing together uh, increase in terms of the amount of time it will take. It'll be shorter amount of time. So that's a behavioral approach to getting people to play together. It may not, however, honor you know, their own impulses, their own need, their own uh, feelings in terms of what they want to contribute, why they want to play, why they are playing what they are playing. Um, in that case, in that example, they're playing what you tell them to play. Now, it doesn't mean that they won't enjoy themselves on some level. It doesn't mean that there won't be a nice product that you can say, great job, or you know, give them a pat on the head, and then they get that reward from the leader, right? So that's, the again, the behavioral approach. A more humanistic approach would be to have people, you know, sit down and just start playing, and maybe you play a pulse, and then you just give people time to kind of figure it out, you know, listen, um, figure out what they're gonna play, how they're gonna relate to that, what they wanna play, um, when or how loud, if they wanna play, if they don't wanna play, they don't play, you know, and not really uh, demand or lead them down any certain path to a specific outcome. In the humanistic model, we would provide the atmosphere, the encouragement, the information, the tools, um, you know, an unconditional acceptance. In other words, we're really not focusing so much on the behavior, but we're focusing on uh, nurturing the person by giving them lots of good things to work with or to play with in this case. And then down the road, you know, it probably will take longer, but the idea is that they will eventually arrive at a, a place where they're playing together because they get satisfaction from that. And they hopefully will, will realize also that it's easier to play together 
than it is to fight the group. You know, and it's easier, it's actually easier to play in time with other people than it is to play out of time. Why is that? Well, because of synchronization and um, entrainment, which is a natural phenomenon. So people naturally want to entrain. They may not be able to entrain entirely, but given enough time, they can develop those listening skills and playing skills to be able to do that. So both of these approaches, the behavioral approach and the humanistic approach, can lead to the same eventual outcome or end behavior. It's just a matter of how you want to get there. So like I said, I tend to favor the humanistic side, but I think everybody, most people, would you know work with a, a blend of the two. So for example, I'll start off with a very humanistic approach. Hey, everybody, let's just play. Then if I see that somebody needs some structure or some guidance or some encouragement, um, or I see they, they're a little too out, out on the edge and they're maybe distracting people, then I can use more of a behavioral approach, maybe with that person, and you know, go towards that more rewards versus punishment model. Um, but I don't have to do that with the whole group. And that way I feel, and this is my own, you know, my own take on it, and I'm not saying that anybody's take is wrong. I just want to give you guys the information. That way I can maintain what I think is more valuable, which is that freedom and the humanistic, um, uh, appro in, within the humanistic approach that allows for the participant or student-centered experience, right? So the experience doesn't center around me as a facilitator. It centers around the participants with me as a guide or support for them. And I think that is the big difference. So if you want to know more about this or if you're interested in facilitating from a more humanistic perspective or a musical or music-based perspective, you can check out my DVD called The Drum Circle, A Musical Approach. And what I did in that DVD is I actually stole a lot of things from the music therapy profession, which are music-based techniques that we can use to influence and shape a musical experience to keep it humanistic, to keep it in the music, and not have heavy-handed techniques like conducting, perhaps being dominating or interrupting people's flow, as it were. And in the next session of Facilitation Fridays, I'm going to talk about flow and what it is and how you can use it and how you know if somebody's in a flow state or not. Uh, so I hope this is helpful. If you have any thoughts about behaviorism versus humanistic uh, or, you know, humanism, uh, let me know. Put them in the comments below. Keep your comments kind, as always. And if you'd like to get more information from me personally, you can join my email list. Go to KalaniMusic.com and join there. Or if you're in the U.S., you can text the word DRUM, D-R-U-M, to 66866, 66866 and uh, join that way and you'll get my direct email messages which have some in additional information that I'm not putting up here on YouTube. In any case, if you like the channel World Drum Club and I want to thank everybody who's been joining and supporting us over at Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Kalani, sign up to be a patron, you get a little bit more over there, but the idea is you're leaving a tip for all the stuff I'm putting up here for free. And it's just a tip, you know, a few bucks a month or whatever you want to spend. No pressure, but we really appreciate that because it lets us do more for you. All right, go out and make some great music. I'm Kalani. Thanks for watching.